How do I look? You look like the orange Michelin man. <laughs> We're Kaylin and Joseph, and we drove our fifth wheel up to Alaska to explore the state for the summer. Wow. Our time in the last frontier is coming to a close, but we have one last stop in Fairbanks, which is home to the only government research facility of its kind, a giant frozen tunnel. It smells a little bit like cow manure. This week we learn how Alaska's past affects the landscape of today. So you can imagine the chaos that this would create with this thaws. Plus, we get an early start to the Christmas season and take a dip in the state's most famous hot springs before heading down yet another ruthless Alaska road. It's gotten a lot worse. <laughs> Welcome to Chicken! The rain is coming to Fairbanks this week. And clearly today, it's very sunny. So we've got one activity that we can do without the rain that we want to do without the rain that we're going to do today. And we're going in this truck, which means we're joining Craig and Victoria for this activity. Which also means I don't have to drive. Can't, can't shut the door. Look at my nice healthy lunch. Nice. Not rubbing it in ready or ready anything. To go? Not rubbing it in. I'm ready to go. I'm excited about this one. I don't know what B-roll to get in the back seat. Like normally you get the B-roll like out the window, you get me. Steering. I got I got a shot up, up I, front. I don't I'm know what driving. to get. Like I'm not steering here. Hang on. We'll get Craig's hand on the wheel. <laughs> that was a little I'm shaky. Put it on cinematically. <laughs> oh, nice, <laughs> nice. Well, we made it to Tina Hot Springs Resort, which this is the first hot springs that's actually that we've been to that has been built up, not just like a hot spring hole in the ground that you have to hike a trail to get to. So we'll see how like resort feel it is, but I think first we're gonna go to the ice museum. We're looking for the ice museum. So far, we've got farmer's market, we have activity center, the activorium, Act activ activatorium. I think they're making up words here. Apparently we have to sign our life away. Is this for the hot springs or the ice museum? Uh, injuries from recreational activities. Apparently we came the same day as the renewable energy fair. Joseph got his free ice cream. Is it good? It's free ice cream. That doesn't sound promising. We are finally ready to hit up the ice museum. If you guys do not feel like you're dressed adequately for those temperatures, we do provide parkas inside. Oh, it is cold in here. I'm going with the parka. And you are wearing <laughs> shorts <short> and <laughs> flip flops. I didn't think it was gonna be this cold. I mean, I know it's an ice museum, but man. Oh, Woo. Not lean on the ice, touch the ice, or lick the ice today. Right here's the ice chapel, and the guide said that they can do wedding ceremonies here, but they keep them under an hour to keep anybody from getting cold feet. There's a secret room. Whew. Oh, this is cool. If I heard him correctly, you can spend 600 bucks to spend the night in here. Do they give you blankets? Yes, they said That's they give you a, they give know. you a thermal. Oh my word! This is like, a polar bear. Uh huh. <laughs> oh, it's another bedroom. Mm-hmm, it's for $600. Ooh, I don't know. I like this one better than the polar bear one. It feels a little like a crypt. This just feels like I'm crawling into a, a drawer. I just love how you still have your swim trunks on for the hot springs <laughs> that we haven't done oh, yet. I am so glad. So we were debating as to whether or not to do the hot springs first or the ice tour first. If we had done the hot springs and then gone in here, our like heads would be freezing. Yeah, they didn't recommend it. There's a reason. <laughs> One other unique feature that they offer here at the Ice Hotel, if you are someone who enjoys the occasional adult beverage, you can get a apple teeny out of a ice glass that is carved right here. Uh, Kayla and I don't drink, so we get to sit out here and watch everybody enjoy theirs. And then they get to go outside and smash their cups. I like, know. I just want a cup to smash. This is actually a really cool experience. Was, <laughs> cool. I honestly didn't see it for that. But it's $20 a person to walk through. You get like a half hour to 45 minutes in here. They talk a little bit and then you get to just kind of wander around all these ice sculptures. 
Definitely a must do if you're in Fairbanks. So they only open the doors at certain times. Now's our chance before they close it in 15, close it for another 15 minutes. I think my toes are falling off. Woo. All right, let's go out while, before he closes that door. Thank you guys for coming. Come back and see us. Oh, that feels Thank nice. <laughs> <laughs> that feels so nice. How are your toes? They're quite, they're quite cold. I do not recommend flip-flops for the uh, Well, he has flip-flops too on. <laughs> now we can make our way to the hot springs and actually get warmed up. like fire and ice tour. We it is. start there and now we're headed to the hot springs. It's $20 each for a hot springs pass too, but that's an all day pass. You can come and go and use hot springs, obviously all day. So apparently this pool... Uh, There's a certain group of people that think it promotes fertility. fertility. So it's a fertility pool. So we don't really don't want to know what I don't know. There's a lot pool. of people in here, so let's we're, hope none of that's going we're, on. We're leaving before it gets dark. <laughs> so this place is really eclectic. Between the two major attractions, the Hot Springs and the Ice Hotel or Ice Museum, I think the ice museum is the thing to come for and the hot springs is the place to just kind of chill out, no pun intended, afterwards. Trinity! Trinity. Look at her on her Aw, you ready to go for a little walk? Let's go to the dog park. Let's go to the dog park. Stay. Okay, come. Good girl. Boys tuckered you out. <laughs> We're gonna have to put all that back. Are you pleased with yourself? If you've been around the channel for a while, you know that Kaylin gets on my case a little bit about not cleaning the windshield. The windshield got dirty. Look at these dirty windows. So today I am going to attempt to make my life a little easier by spending a little bit more time and popping Rain-X on there because I want her to be able to get good video. I want her to be happy with me. So let's do this. I very much appreciate the sentiment. I just don't know how much good video I'm gonna get outside the window when it's raining, but at least it will be clear. You will see the water just like beating off that windshield hey. and flying off the side. So you, you guys help me appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> but what it's supposed to do is I'm supposed to wash the window, put the rain -X on, spray it on, and then, uh, let it fog over and then spray the rain -X on again, wipe it down, let it fog over and then wipe it all off. And then if the advertising is correct, the water should just run right off. Oh, look at the difference. Yeah, it works. It's still gonna have some maintenance. I'm still gonna have to put the rain -X on here like once a month, but I'm hoping that this will mean I wash the window less and you be happy. Always happy, except when I'm angry. I am making. I am, she, she's really never mad at me. <laughs> now I've got to do four other windows with Rainex because I just realized I really don't want to leave the other windows no. that way. And I've got to replace the windshield wipers. <laughs> This morning on top of the gray, dreary oh, weather, no. we also said goodbye to Craig and Victoria. Not goodbye, see you later. See you later. We hope to see them down the road, yes. possibly. Sooner rather than yep. later, they headed out to kind of take a similar route that we're taking through Canada. Um, so they're scouting for us. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna know whether things are not great or not. But yeah, it was so fun to spend the entire summer together. We're gonna talk more about that in an upcoming Alaska recap yep. video where we tackle all the Alaska topics. But we do have some things today, today. Yeah. to help keep our minds off the fact that the people that we've spent the last 95 days with are gone. I don't know if I'm gonna be warm enough for what we're doing today. I've got a long sleeve shirt, a pullover, my jacket. I think they're gonna have parkas there that I will probably use. Any guesses? He just made me realize like, I don't know why I don't think in layers. I'm like, this is the heaviest coat I have. I'll wear Do you have coat. a short sleeve shirt on? I have a short sleeve shirt on. Yeah, you're not gonna be warm enough. Gotta put on my rain boots. 
Do you have like multi layers of socks? Yes. I have two socks on. That would be only one sock per foot. No, you know what I mean. Bye, Trin Trin. No, you're not coming. You're not coming. This isn't, this isn't a walk. Putting on more socks? Putting on more socks. The problem is, is that this place is going to be a half hour away, so we're going to have to like turn on the air conditioning in That's the truck. Because I now have a short sleeve, a long sleeve, a uh, spring jacket, I guess, and then my jacket on, and now two pairs of socks as well. Really? We're getting a close up of my feet? Mm hmm. People pay for this stuff. <laughs> see you later, Cody. Do you see how all the water is like nicely it's just beaded? Beating and then up. hang on, we're, we'll do the windshield wipers and it'll just okay. like run right off. Whoa. I do need to wash the inside of the window though. We are headed today to a government research facility. Top secret. I don't know that I don't it's think top it's top secret because you can literally Google it. You can Google it, um, but you can only go via an invite. You can't just, it's not like a touristy thing where you can just go and visit. So I'm beating around the bush. What is it? It is the permafrost research tunnel. I feel like it's the only one of its kind. Is that correct? I don't think there's another one in the world. I'm gonna say it's the only one in the US, but we're gonna to have to ask our friend well, Roy, yeah. who reached out to us a long time ago when we were first on our way to Alaska and said, hey, when you're up here, if you're interested in coming to my place of work, yeah. which is the permafrost tunnel, yeah. hook me up. See all the leaves starting to change? Oh my goodness. They're getting yellow. It feels, I'm not trying to be melodramatic, but it just feels so, surreal like with them leaving today and the weather really starting to change it's getting colder the leaves are turning and we're literally leaving alaska tomorrow it's it's crazy to me there are people that were messaging me on instagram and they're like wait i feel like you just got there and in a way it does feel like that yeah it went by fast Upon our arrival at the permafrost tunnel, we started our tour with a safety briefing and learned more about how this government-run facility is studying permafrost and why. So you can imagine the chaos that this would create if this thaws everything above it. If you're not familiar with the term permafrost, this is soil or rocks that have been permanently frozen for two or more years. As the permafrost thaws, it has major consequences on homes, roads, and other infrastructure. In cold climates like Alaska, you'll find three zones of permafrost, ranging from fully frozen ground to tiny patches. This tunnel in particular is located outside Fairbanks, which puts us squarely in the discontinuous zone. Next, we donned our protective gear to make sure we stayed safe and warm inside the tunnel. How do I look? You look like the orange Michelin man. <laughs> <laughs> but before we can experience this giant freezer for ourselves, our guide Roy gives us an unexpected warning as to what we'll find inside. So the uh, the first thing you're going to notice and the last thing you're going to forget is the smell. Oh, oh joy. Yeah, it's the uh, as the microbes wake up, they uh, start eating the organic material and it's just the gases that they emit. So. It smells a little bit like cow manure. It's a little, little punky. Long, wide passageways ripe for research stretched out in multiple directions. I'm trying to be so careful when I'm walking so that we don't have all this dust going everywhere. And also there's ice underneath us, so we don't want to slip and fall. We spotted rivers of ice called segregation ice. That's the debris that was floating on top of the water. Ice wedges. Warm is when the air temperature gets minus 40, minus 50 degrees. The ground actually contracts and will crack. Ice and snow gets in there. Ice and snow is gonna melt. And then when it refreezes, water expands by 7%, makes that crack a little bit bigger. Over thousands of years, this is what you get preserved plant life, and perfectly preserved bones inside this giant freezer. And we got to touch them. I don't know, I feel like I'm doing something I shouldn't be doing. No, no, you're fine. At museums, they're like, don't touch stuff. I don't think I put on enough socks. He told me, socks and boots. I have two pairs of socks. I think I needed four pairs of socks. <laughs> My feet are pretty frozen too. To keep the tunnel from thawing in the summer, it has to be cooled with air conditioners, but the tunnel is still slowly getting wider. So spongy. Due to a process called sublimation. I think that one of the, my biggest takeaways that I didn't understand about ice in general is that ice can go from ice to 
like evaporation without going through a liquid stage. And so this whole tunnel has so many examples of that where the ice is like back into the dirt and the permafrost there, if you touch it, it's spongy and starts to fall away because the water is actively like evaporating from the sides of the tunnel. So it just keeps exposing all these old bones. And then this is a woolly mammoth humerus, so the upper arm bone of a woolly this mammoth. This is the only permafrost tunnel that exists in the world, and getting the chance to explore it firsthand gave us an even deeper understanding of Alaska's unique and icy landscape. It feels so warm out here and balmy compared to in there, and the lenses are now all fogging up. I'm not exaggerating when I say that that was one of the coolest tours slash experiences, no pun intended, coolest, okay, maybe it was a little intended, uh, coolest tours that we got to do here in Alaska. Huge thanks to Roy for inviting us to and bringing us along to see the permafrost tunnel. We really, really enjoyed it. But now, now we're headed to the North Pole. Obviously not the North Pole, North Pole. North Pole, Alaska. But it's a town that is like Christmas all year round. Look at the McDonald's. With the uh, candy cane, cane arm. Yeah. Wendy's is not playing along. It's the Santa Claus house. And over here, we have the world's largest Santa Claus. Are they sure? I don't know, they've like, measured. Who's, who's going around and checking all the Santa Clauses? <laughs> that are out there to make sure that's he, the largest he one. He doesn't look very healthy. For world's largest, I kind of expected it to be a little bigger. Yeah. I'm just saying. I don't know if I'm going to Santa's workshop or Target at the moment with these, uh, you know, Target decor. I gotta get inside. It is nasty out here. Obviously, we wanna look around at everything Christmas but we do have a goal of trying to find something Christmas themed and Alaska themed and some sort of souvenir that's not like a knickknack that we can actually use, so. Are we trying to find two things? Like each of us find one thing or are we finding one thing? I think is one this a competition? thing together, like this isn't, we're in- This isn't a competition? No, okay. we're, we're an RV couple and we just can't buy lots of things to keep in the RV, so one thing. <laughs> okay, got it. small, but it would also break. Yeah, I don't I don't think that's a good idea. Nothing says Christmas like ravens. We have uh, reindeer noses. Nice. So we obviously have the moose in Alaska with this Christmas red, and then you wear these in the winter time. And Joseph was saying that he really did want something with like the stickies on the bottom. So, boom, we got it. I feel like you need to explain a little bit more. I wanted a pair of slippers. You don't need to explain. But Kaylin <laughs> says I can't have slippers because then I wear he them. He wears them outside, they're in-house slippers. Like you wear them in-house, you stay in-house, you don't go outside. So this is our compromise. I get socks because I'm not going to wear these outside. Hopefully. Hopefully. We'll see. They're squishy. Well, that was a fun little pit stop. It was. The only thing, though, that this really feels like Christmas is that the weather outside has been frightful. It needs to be snowing for it to feel like no. Christmas. Yes. No. Well, to feel like Christmas, yes. Yeah. Does it need to be snowing right now? Yeah. Nope. The bittersweet things keep coming. We also picked up the final postcards. No more purchasing of postcards. Nope, we're gonna send them tomorrow on our last day. Tomorrow is our last full day in Alaska, and of course we're gonna spend it in true open roading fashion and drive all day long. We've got 300 miles to go from here to Chicken, uh, and some of that is supposedly not great roads. So my goal tonight is to get the RV and everything as prepped as possible so that in the morning, all we have to do is pull the slides in, uh, jump in the truck and pull up. Chicken. Chicken. That's how you said it. You're like chicken. Oh, I got to tell you, I held back. I almost said we got to go from Fairbanks to chicken. <laughs> all right, we'll see you tomorrow. You had to go and make fun of me.
We've got Trinity. We have Cody peeking out. I think we're ready to go. I guess we need you too. If you want to get anywhere, you do. <laughs> What did you do to our son? I I was just telling Kaylin, I was like, yay, it's sunny out. I would love it if today was just no rain and literally five minutes later, this. Would it be our last day in Alaska if it wasn't raining though? I mean, it's just, it's the typical Alaska send off. We've got to make a really quick stop, really important. Follow me. It's exciting! We started the Alcan in June, and after making apparently a few wrong turns and a few detours, we finished the Alcan! The end of the Alaska Highway, mile 1422, is official. We just, we took, took the long way around. All right, that was fun. Now we have 170 miles still to go today, so. Don't you want your $3 certificate? No, I do not need a $3 certificate. That oh, says watch we did this the puddle, Alcan. watch this puddle. And technically until we get to Toke, we haven't done the whole Alcan, but we are going to Toke. So we will have done the entire road. So the road's getting back here to Toke, which is kind of weird being here since we were here two months ago, but we've completed the Alaska Loop. Now we're on our way up to Chicken. The roads here were in actually better shape. There were a few spots that weren't all that great, but I would say overall this road was better than the road from here to Glen Allen. From here to Glen Allen, very frost heavy and whatnot here, mostly smooth, but we've been told by Craig and Victoria that the next 70 or so miles from here to Chicken are probably the worst that we're gonna face over the next couple days. Which means the worst is yet to come. It's kind of weird traveling today without Craig and Victoria, so I'm not Bob. You know, there's somebody behind me, so I guess I'm Bob for them. And I don't have a Bob in front of me. Yeah, we heard that the route from Toke to Chicken is actually pretty bad. Craig and Victoria did it yesterday. She texted me and she's like, I don't think it's as bad as McCarthy, but our coffee pot, our heavy coffee pot that sits on the countertop bounced into our sink. So we uh, made sure to take our Ninja off the counter as well today. I guess to be fair, we kind of do have a Bob. They're just not in sight. That's true. They they're can a, just give us road updates. They're a day ahead of us. Here we go. Taylor Highway. Something tells me that highway is, um, should be like, in quotes, it should be like Taylor Highway. There's definitely some bumps. There's a lot of patches on the road, but so far, so far, it's not terrible. McCarthy still ranks as our number one worst road. I still have 36 miles to eat my words, but I would even go so far as to say Destruction Bay to Toke on the Alcan seemed worse than uh, this so far. It seems right? so long ago, but yeah, I, I feel like Destruction Bay to Toke, there was a lot of more potholes. A lot of sections with no pavement even. Yeah. And there's only been two sections so far, I think. really wavy up here. Whew. Is it on par with Destruction Bay to Toke now? This section is, that's for sure. Definitely eating my words. <laughs> it's gotten a lot worse. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Rough road, loose gravel, all washboardy. Chicken! Better known as the sign that says, welcome to chicken. We have got gift shop, diesel, park cabins, and we passed the post office already. I think that's it. I think that's chicken. Where's, where are we parking? I think we can park. There's the RV park entrance. Down yeah, I can't go, here. I can't go across the road over that way. So I think there's supposed to be free parking in the back. Is this the chicken statue? No. The chicken statue, I think, is bigger. <laughs> what? It's the, it's the chickens. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. 
Oh my goodness, she hates the chicken statues. <laughs> All right, this is Victoria's text message that there's free camping slash overnight parking at the Saloon Mercantile Cafe. This was not it. So I'm thinking maybe we go back up the road. So we're open because it looks like nothing is there. Else. There's a junkyard over that way. Oh, you know what? There's a chicken RV park a quarter mile up, so maybe. Oh, so maybe it's not the right. It's oh, a look, different Chicken one. Creek Cafe. Okay, so we just took the wrong road. Chicken gas station, downtown chicken. Okay, so we haven't actually seen chicken yet. We haven't, apparently. I think this is where we want to go. Yep, Mercantile. There we and go. And Saloon. This is the spot. Free camping. That's what we like to see. Another Jayco. We are the biggest one back Yeah, can now. we fit? That's Ooh, the, that's I don't the question. Know. And if we can't fit, can we turn around? <laughs> right. Well, that boondocking spot was definitely too tight. Uh, everybody in there was like vans and classes, and there was no way we were going to fit with, with them all in there. But we have a plan B. It's a little outside of chicken. However, we have one important piece of business to take care of here in Chicken. So we've got to do that first and then we'll continue on to plan B. Well, it's our last day in Alaska. And if you were ever curious what 172 postcards looked like, here, I'll use my head for scale. They look like this right here. This is everybody's second postcard. We wanted the weight. We sent all the rest out throughout our trip. We wanted to send everybody's second postcard on our final day. Not, kind of sad, but here we are, the lovely chicken post office. It's not very big, but yeah. I think it will fit it. You just we, have to do multiples. Like 10 at a time. Yeah. Hopefully not everybody else is sending 170 <laughs> postcards. Uh-oh, we're filling it. I just hope everyone's able to get their postcard from here. No. Did you literally just fill it all up? No, there's, there's, there's room. They are going to be it. so surprised tomorrow. That's it. Thanks again to everyone who joined our Alaska Postcard Club. We really enjoyed being able to connect with you through this medium through snail mail and send you a little piece of Alaska and share our adventures with you. So thank you again for your support of the channel. And now we have tight turnaround number two. We've got to figure out how to get out of the chicken parking, it's, the post office It's a little line. dicey up I there. Think. I think this spot is going to work for the nights about 35 to 40 miles north of chicken, but we got to get a good night's sleep because we have a big day tomorrow. We have a border crossing. We have top of the world highway. We have a RV ferry crossing. Yeah, we're taking our RV on a ferry ride over to Dawson City. And that's one of the reasons why we wanted to go up through chicken instead of going back down south through Toke and Beaver Creek the way we came into Alaska so we could do top of the world highway because we hear so many RVers rave about how pretty it is. But like I said, we gotta get some sleep. And you're gonna wanna mash that subscribe button because even though this is our last Alaska video, you do videos down the road, we are going to release our whole Alaska recap, the things we would have done differently, the things we're gonna do next time we come to Alaska, and most importantly, our budget recap. Let's see your socks. You gotta pull it up. Oh, sorry. Pull your legs up. Here see? we go, Alaska socks. <laughs> you like them? I do, they're comfy. Hang on, I gotta go grab some. No, you better not. Don't wear those outside. <laughs> You're a brat.